So Christian McCaffrey has been on an absolute tear here in the 2019 season, and honestly, he's even getting some MVP consideration, although it's only through five weeks. Through five games, he's racked up 587 rushing yards and 279 receiving yards. That puts him at 866 yards from scrimmage through five weeks, which actually, if you calculate that out for a whole season, that would be 2,771.2 yards from scrimmage, which would be an NFL record. The current record was Chris Johnson in 2009 for Tennessee having 2,509 total yards from scrimmage. Now granted, it's a lot easier to do that through 5 games than it is to do it through 16 games, but I think that goes to show just what kind of a tear this guy is on and how good he is playing because he is playing tremendously well. And literally, I mean, he's playing historically well. If he did this through a 16 game season, it would break NFL records. That's how good he's playing. He can be effective in both the passing game and in the rushing game, and let's just get into some of his plays because he is just a fun guy to break down, and we'll start things off with this play. It's going to be a cover 3 zone that they're going against, and so this concept for Carolina is relatively simple. They're going to have that receiver just run deep, and then they're going to have Christian McCaffrey run underneath him. The whole point of a play like this is that that receiver does run deep, which in theory will then cause Jacksonville defenders to also run with him, and then McCaffrey can simply just run underneath and there would be nobody in that area, and he could pick up some yards until a defender then realizes what's going on, runs underneath, and makes a tackle. And so as you see, after this ball is snapped, it is going to work out perfectly for Carolina, and now McCaffrey can try to get the first down before running out of bounds. He totally could do that here. However, McCaffrey has other ideas, and here's what's going to happen, and it's going to be the main thing I'm going to be talking about in this video, is his ability to stop while still moving at a top speed. I mean, that's just an insane move. That's almost like defying the laws of physics, that's how good of a move that is. I mean, we have so much motion going forward, but then to have the leg strength to just stop on an instant, and then to continue running forward and picking up even more yards, I mean, it's ridiculous. That's what makes him so great, his ability to shift his body weight and to move and to stop on a dime, be able to move around and gain as much yards as possible. It's seriously video game like abilities that McCaffrey has, it's tremendous and let's just show another play, let's show this one. It's going to be a cover one blitz and that's going to be McCaffrey's route here, it's a curl route which can get open if the linebacker who's in charge of covering him plays a little bit too far off and after the spell snap you're going to notice that is totally what's happening, I mean there is absolutely an easy window for Kyle Allen to hit McCaffrey and for them to gain some yards. But McCaffrey's going to do something a bit interesting here. You know, he is open, so he could just stand there and take the catch, but he's not going to do that. He's instead going to run up to the top half of the screen. Allen's able to hit him there, and that way, he didn't just gain some yards, he gets a touchdown. That's really just impressive, too, the fact that he has the acceleration to just, in an instant, again, this is kind of the opposite of the last play, where the last play, he was running at full speed, then he was able to stop. On this play, he was stopped, but then got to his top speed quickly. I mean, honestly, watching tape from McCaffrey and breaking down tape from McCaffrey, he just does this all the time. He just does these types of things so consistently, and that's what makes him fun to watch, and that's what makes him such an effective player. I mean, he's had good years in the past. Last season, he nearly had 2,000 yards from scrimmage. He had just under that, so he's clearly a dominant player. But here in 2019, he's definitely taken the next step, so to speak. He's going from being a dominant player to being not just an elite player, but to potentially being the best running back in the NFL. He's put himself in that conversation. Whereas last year, I'm not sure if I would have put him in that conversation. This year, I would. Absolutely, I would. There was also this play, which I found interesting. It's going to be a rushing play, and what's going to happen is that the center and left guard will be double teaming an interior lineman, and then also the left tackle will be just blocking an edge rusher straight up. And so for McCaffrey, you typically would expect him to try to run in between those two Jaguars. However, that's going to be a little bit more difficult and going to be a little bit more easier said than done. Because as you see when this ball is snapped, Jacksonville did a good job of clogging up that area. And not just that, but there are three other Jaguars defenders in that area who also realized, okay, this is probably a run through the bottom half of the screen, so let's all move over and try to make sure we're covering that up. But there is one other thing that should be mentioned, and it's going to be that there's a receiver who's running up to the top half of the screen, acting as though he's going to take a handoff, potentially a reverse, and run up to the top half of the screen. And so if you look at that Jaguars defender right there, he's preparing for that. He's making sure he's running up to the top half of the screen to make sure that it isn't a reverse, it isn't going to be run through the top half of the screen. Or if it is, then you're in position where you can stop it, or at least disrupt it enough that somebody else can stop it. However, McCaffrey sees all of this. So first, he sees what's going on and realizes that 
the gap on the bottom half of the screen isn't going to be too open, but there is actually a gap on the top half of the screen. And there's nobody at that second level since that Jaguars defender is kind of fooled here. He's expecting it to be a handoff to the receiver. So pretty good situation for McCaffrey, but it is not a great situation just quite yet. There is still a Jaguar safety in this area who could potentially make a play. Now granted, once again, you will notice he's a bit too high up to the top half of the screen because he was expecting there to also potentially be a wide receiver handoff on this one. But still worth mentioning, while he is significantly higher up to the top half of the screen than McCaffrey, he also is a solid 9 yards further down the field, so if he takes the right angle, he could potentially be able to make a tackle. At least that's what you would expect. But look at McCaffrey's speed here. He's just going to outrun him. I mean, there's nothing you can do there against that type of speed. That's a perfect angle, but it doesn't matter. I mean, again, that's just kind of just exactly what you want to see out of your halfback. The fact that he realized that the hole that he was supposed to run through wasn't going to work, but there's another hole that's wide open, so that one could work. But then also having the speed to turn what could have been just a 30-yard rush into a touchdown. His yardage totals are definitely insane, but hey, it does kind of make it easier when you can have rushes like that, where you can pick up an 80-yard rush or so, so that way you can just, you know, bolster your stats, but it also just really helps your team. There's also this one where it's man coverage. McCaffrey's actually lined up as a receiver right here. He's right there on the bottom half of the screen. And it's essentially going to be a pick play that Carolina is running, where they're going to have that receiver try to get into the way of the guy who's in charge of covering McCaffrey, and then McCaffrey just runs a slant route over in the middle. And if he can get open with nobody really covering him, that can be good news for Carolina. And as you see, that's going to be exactly what happens. He gets open, the play works out, Allen is able to hit him, and he makes the catch, so guaranteed some yards here no matter what they've already had a positive gain on this one but there is a jaguars player who's in the area so what you would expect is that okay it kind of worked out but now you'll get tackled at least you gain five yards or so but again that's what you'd expect if you weren't watching tape on christian mccaffrey which luckily for us we are right now because he's fun to watch watch this move he's going to put on he fakes as though he's going to the left cuts to the right very quickly is able to get around that jaguars defender and is then just able to run for many more yards than that play was even designed for that's what mccaffrey does he takes setup plays and turns them into first downs he takes good plays and turns them into touchdowns i mean just Everything is extended with McCaffrey. Every play that's supposed to go for 4 yards goes for 7. Every play that's supposed to go for 7 goes for 15. And the plays that are supposed to go for 15 go for touchdowns. That's just what he brings to this Carolina football team. It's kind of crazy that when Carolina used a top 10 pick on McCaffrey, a lot of people were saying, you don't like to use a top 10 pick on a running back. That can often be a mistake. And you know what? Sometimes it can be a mistake, but it's not a mistake when your running back has the overall impact that McCaffrey does. I mean, his impact is just so great on that Carolina Panthers team, and this play will be another example of that. It's going to be a cover four zone, and for McCaffrey, it's pretty simple. It's just check down duty. Run up to the top half of the screen, then Allen could hit you. You could try to gain some yards. Since it's a cover four zone, there's going to be less Jaguars who are in the middle of the field, so this actually is a good time to take this check down and throw it to McCaffrey. So that's what Allen is going to do. He reads the coverage, says, okay, I'll just hit McCaffrey. It's cover four, so this means that there's only going to be three people in the middle of the field, so if he can make someone miss, this can be a good thing. I mean, look, as you see, there's clearly, you know, a one-on-one -on -one matchup right there where there is a Jaguar who could make this tackle, but there's no other Jaguars anywhere close to this area. So if he could just make one man miss, he could potentially gain close to the first down. And McCaffrey has an act for making somebody miss. That's exactly what he does. It's just, it's an unreal juke. That's kind of what makes him so effective is his juking ability is just ridiculous. He totally gets you to believe that you're going one way, so you totally sell out because again, it's difficult. When someone jukes you, it's very different than in two-hand touch when all you have to do is reach out and touch them. You have to try to make a tackle, so you have to put your body weight towards where you think they're going. And as soon as a defender does that, he has the footwork to get around them, and that's how he's able to get around so many of these guys. I mean, he really can. He can make you look stupid out there. He can make you look clumsy. And these guys aren't clumsy. This is a good defense. He's just that good. Anyways, what's going to happen on this play is that the center and left guard will be double teaming that Jaguar right there. And actually the key block is going to be the left tackle blocking that defender. Ideally, you would like to get him as far to the right side of the screen as possible, but that is not going to work out at all. In fact, the opposite is going to happen. He instantly goes to the left, and now it's kind of turned into the opposite situation. Where for McCaffrey, okay, not the end of the world, you just have to go around him, and while it appears as though there's another defender in the area, he's getting blocked as well, he will get blocked by that panther right over there. But the real problem is going to be 56 right there, because for McCaffrey, he could try to run to the outside to try to get into that gap, 
but then 56 can easily just also get into the gap and make a tackle for not a big gain. And so McCaffrey is going to try to run through that gap, but watch his footwork here. I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's just not fair. The fact that he can bounce back and forth so quickly like that. I mean, that's not even video game realism because in a video game, most people don't have the reflexes to do something like that. But he has the reflexes to do something like that in real life. As a Buccaneers fan, I hate it, but as a fan of football, I can't help but enjoy watching him play, even if it, it hurts my team because he's in our division. He's one of those guys, I'm sure you all know it, when it's like, when someone makes a great play against your team and you're not even mad, you're just like, how did you do that? That's what he does. I mean, he's, he's really fun to watch. Have I mentioned he's fun to watch yet in this video? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm repeating myself. I get excited when I'm talking about good football and Let's be honest, this is good football. One last play. Again, this is just another ridiculous one. At this point, I'm just showing the fun ones because, eh, why not? It's towards the end of the video. Let's show some fun ones. I don't know exactly what we're learning here, but it's fun, so who cares? What's going to happen is it's going to be a cover one hole, and McCaffrey's just running to the flat on the bottom half of the screen. That's all he's doing here. And so Allen takes the snap, quickly hits McCaffrey. It's now a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So, okay, once again, this is one of those... You gain five yards, that's all the play is designed for, but that's pretty good. Gaining five yards on a second down and ten absolutely has value. And again, it's also one of those situations where if he can make a move, he can potentially get the first down. But the problem is, there's no way to make a move here. I mean, look at McCaffrey. If he runs to the sideline, well, there's only one extra step you can go on the sideline. He's almost at the sideline right now. And if you run too far to the inside of the field, well, I mean, if you look at that Jaguars defender, he's already up to the inside of the field. So... Really, for McCaffrey, I would recommend, for most people, put your head down, try to gain as many yards as possible. But that's not what McCaffrey does, and watch this move. I mean, what do you even say about that? that that's kind of the move where it's like, okay, if you're a young running back, don't watch tape from Christian McCaffrey, because you will never be as good as Christian McCaffrey. You just have to, you have to watch tape of some lesser guys and learn a technique that way, because... That's not really what you should do. You should just put your head down and gain a few yards extra. But if you're Christian McCaffrey, that is what you should do because he can get away with it because he's that good. I think it's worth mentioning that through five weeks, he might have been the best player in football. I think he's in that conversation. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is ridiculous and he plays quarterback, which is the more valuable position. But if we're taking positional value out of the equation and just talking in terms of how good are you comparative to your position, I mean... Through five weeks, he's been ridiculous. Although it also should be mentioned that one of these games, he only had 53 total yards from scrimmage. That's including receiving and rushing. That was game two against Tampa Bay, when Tampa Bay clearly had the mindset of, let's stop Christian McCaffrey and make Cam Newton hurt us, and it worked out for them. But as a whole, without that happening, I mean, he's been dominant. He's already had multiple 200-yard days and a 170-yard day. So that just kind of... The stats alone are mind-blowing, and the tape alone is mind-blowing. We'll have to see how he does in London, how he does in the rematch against Tampa Bay, but I think it's very interesting to just talk about what's going on through five weeks. He's been ridiculous, and we'll see if he can continue it.